Just look at Clarence Thomas, whose corruption is almost comical. Secret trips to retreats, international vacations on super yachts, and private jet jaunts to New Haven for an afternoon. Here in Congress, we are forbidden from receiving gifts that exceed $50. But Justice Thomas has received more than $4 million in gifts, largely undisclosed, since joining the court. And worse, it appears to be working. He is currently primed to overturn his own 2005 doctrine so he can side with Charles Koch's network and their oil and gas interests, the same Charles Koch who, secret, who he secretly vacationed with at the retreat. Or take Justice Alito, whose quote-unquote friendship with billionaire Paul Singer, along with more undisclosed gifts and private jet trips, jet trips was followed by a shift in the court's decision to take up Singer's own case. Coincidentally, after Justice Alito took an unreported fishing trip to Alaska with Singer, the Supreme Court reversed their position and took up his case, ultimately leading Singer to a victory netting $2.4 billion. This was not a bad return on Singer's $80 million in political donations, a fishing trip, and a couple bottles of $1,000 wine. And of course, in 2022, these billionaires and their hand-picked justices won their keystone victory against the American people and their progress as a society. They overturned Roe v. Wade. So why was it abortion? Why was the threat of women having freedom powerful enough to bring down our whole system of judicial ethics and cripple one of the three co-equal branches of government? That is because these rich and powerful men are in an existential fight for a status quo that enshrines their power and places them above, above the American public in the rules. The confluence of money and conservatism is no coincidence, and we are here today to connect the dots. The group behind the Dobbs Challenge was, predictably, funded by who else but Leonard Leo.